Now, I'm not one to gossip, but I will bring you the tea. Welcome to Chronicle Speaks. Please, please, I don't have any time for any gossip now. Mm -hmm. Eh? Yes. Look at you. The Puerto Rican princess herself, Miss Jocelyn Hernandez, a.k.a. Shanelica Bettencourt. Shanelica. You no, know, but that's not my well. name, but that's, that's that my is your name. name. Went on a rampage earlier this month, and while y'all thought y'all had seen it all, her police report shows something different. Jocelyn had not one, but two victims, one of which was a man simply trying to calm her down, and she threw a cell phone at his head right in front of the police. Now, I'm not sure what was going on with Jocelyn that day, but sis is facing a barrage of charges. We are going to get into that and so much more, but before we do, please be sure to subscribe to this channel and hit the bell for notifications so you don't miss out on any news regarding this tea and so much more. Now let's get back into so it. So after Floyd Mayweather's big exhibition fight against John Gotti III, there was some ruckus going on behind the scenes. A video surfaced of Jocelyn Hernandez and Big Lex, who was once on Jocelyn's show, Jocelyn's Cabaret. Not only did Jocelyn put paws on Big Lex, but she was going around smacking pretty much anyone that was in her way. Big Lex did end up calling the police, and the next thing we knew, a mug shot was released of Jocelyn, and she was charged with resisting arrest with battery, domestic battery, battery, and trespassing after warning. So let's go over this police report to see exactly what happened. It says on June 12, 2023, the defendant, Jocelyn Hernandez, did knowingly and intentionally commit the act of resisting arrest with violence, domestic battery, and trespass after warning to wit. Contact was made with the defendant who was located in a dressing room on the event level of the Florida Live Arena located at 1 Panther Parkway in the city of Sunrise, Florida, Broward County. The defendant exited the bathroom within the dressing room and began to verbally assault law enforcement officers as they informed her that she needed to leave the property. The defendant continued to argue with officers, ignoring all orders to leave. In an attempt to calm the defendant down, victim number one shouted to her, please calm down. The defendant began to verbally assault the victim before throwing a cell phone at him, which struck him in the head. Officers then took the defendant into custody. Once in custody, the defendant continuously pushed, pulled, braced, and tensed, all in an effort to prevent the officers from transporting her to a patrol vehicle. Additionally, the defendant attempted to kick multiple officers while yelling racial slurs at all officers involved. Once placed in my patrol car, the defendant refused to provide any identifying information. While completing the probable cause affidavit, I was contacted by an assisting officer who advised that he was in contact with an additional victim. Officer Reverardo made contact with victim number two who advised that while sitting on the event level of the Florida Live Arena, the defendant walked up to her, threw a cardboard box at her head, and then began to strike her about her face and head with a closed fist. Once victim number two was on the ground, the defendant continued to kick the victim in her stomach while bystanders attempted to pull her off the victim. Video footage was obtained of this incident. Uh, let me, I got to run into the store. Hello? Yeah, I gotta run to the store real quick. Okay. You have an emergency? Yeah, I do. I just got jumped at the, the TNT fight, the Floyd fight. Okay, where where? Okay, where did that happen? That happened at the FLA uh, arena. I had to get away. They they beat, they beat me real bad. Okay. Do you need a paramedic? Um, I just need the police officer. I'm gonna start, I want to press charges, file police report. What's the address here? The address is 13605 West Sunrise Boulevard. Okay. Are you at a business? Yeah. No, I'm at uh, the Shell gas station. You're at the Shell? Okay. Yeah. And um, when, how long ago did this happen? It just happened like maybe like 10 minutes ago, like 10, 15 minutes ago. Okay. Do you know these people? Yeah, I know everybody who jumped me. Okay, just verifying you don't need a paramedic? No, sir. Okay, where did they where, where did they go? Or are, are they still at the arena or do you know where they went? Um, I'm not sure. Um I'm not sure where they went. I just know I had to get away. 
Okay. Are you on foot or in a vehicle? Um, I'm in a vehicle. What's the color make and model of your vehicle? It's a white BMW. I don't know what kind it is, but it's like one of the upgrade ones. I mean, we we right here. Okay. Is it a sedan or SUV? I guess it's a sedan. I don't. I, I don't. I'm not sure what you would call that. Okay. Is it a regular car or is it a you know a sports utility vehicle or? A truck or it's a sports car, but it's a regular car. Okay, what's the telephone? What's the best callback number for you? I don't know the phone number. I'm just using his phone, using so y'all don't have us. Okay, what, what's yeah. your name? We'll, we'll be here though. Uh, I'll put in a call, and uh, we'll, we'll get an officer out there to take a report. Okay, just verifying that the, the individuals that uh, jumped you are, aren't there at the gas station. No, sir. Okay, all righty. I'll, right. I'll put a call. And we'll get an officer out. Thank you. Jocelyn cannot return to the incident location. She cannot have contact with any of the victims. She can travel outside of the state of Florida. However, she has to notify them 24 hours before she leaves. And she has to provide the supervising officer with an itinerary. None of the four charges had a bond listed except for the one of resisting officers and obstruction with violence. That was a $1,500 bond which her boyfriend, Ballistic Beats, did end up paying. That resisting officer and obstruction with violence carries a level three felony. The level three felony in the state of Florida can carry a maximum sentence of five years in prison. The judge can also impose a $5,000 fine on you and put you on probation for five years. The two battery charges that she has are both level one misdemeanors that carry up to one year in jail and a thousand dollar fine the trespassing charge is a level two misdemeanor with up to 60 days in jail and a 500 hundred dollar fine this is truly a real life example of play silly games win silly prizes now, i'm honestly not sure of what jocelyn was on that day but whatever it was had her acting very inhumane she was going around smacking very big dudes that could probably put a hurting on her but she knew because of who she is because she's a female they couldn't do anything to her the two victims are pressing charges so we will be following Following this case to see exactly how it unfolds but until then i need to know what do you think about everything going on with jocelyn hernandez what do you think about this new victim having a cell phone thrown in his head simply for telling her you need to calm down leave a comment and you know how we do we will talk about it down below talk to you guys later bye as always, thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, and hit that bell so you don't miss any of my new episodes.